Welcome back to AlgoJest. Today we're going to be looking at a hard code interview question, Alien Dictionary. Now, if you haven't seen this and get it in an interview, my condolences, this is tougher than getting a job within the current tech market but we're going to go for it anyways. So let's start off with the problem statement. So we're given a sorted dictionary of an alien language having N words and K starting alphabets of standard dictionary. Find the order of characters in the alien language. So many orders may be possible for a particular test case. Thus, you may return any valid order and the output will be one if the order of the string returned by the function is correct. Otherwise, it'll be zero. So in our first example, we have this dictionary and we know the words in this sequence are ordered. We need to return the order of characters characters for this dictionary. So let's try and source this out. So here we have our alien dictionary. We know that this dictionary, the words in it are ordered sequentially. So this word comes before this, comes before this, comes before this, comes before this within this dictionary, but we do not know the ordering of the characters and we need to suss that out. So let's take it back to the basics. Let's say we have these words and just for argument's sake, this is using the normal alphabet A to Z, but let's assume we don't know that. How would we go about solving this? Well, we know that these are ordered based on the words. So to get the ordering of the characters, what we're going to do is compare two of the words characters, and we're going to iterate through both of them and compare until we find a differentiating character. So initially we compare A and A. These two are the same, so they cancel out. And we move over to B and C. These are differentiating characters. So we can assume that B comes before C here. And that would make sense because this is A to Z. Then we assess the next two words. So we look at each character within those words, the A's cancel out. We hit C and D. These are different, so we can assume that C comes before D. Makes sense, because this falls in A to Z. Then we compare the last two words. So the A's cancel out, the D's cancel out, the last one's D and E. D is different to E, so we can assume that D is before E. So within this, B comes before C, C comes before D, and D comes before E, which all fits within our alphabet. We know that these words are sorted, but we don't know the corresponding order of the characters. So let's follow the exact same process that we just used to calculate it. So we look at the first two words. We look for characters that are different. So B and A are different. So for this, we can assume B comes before A within this alien dictionary because we know that these words are ordered. So we just need to compare the characters. Then we move to the next two words. The A's cancel out, B's cancel out, C's cancel out, D and A are different. So D also comes before A. Then we look at the next two. Immediately we can see A and C are different. So A comes before C. And the last two words, C and A both cancel out, and we can see that B comes before D. So when running through this and calculating the orders of characters, we can see that consecutive words gives us a piece of information about the ordering of these characters and their dependencies. So in order to get to A, you first need to go to B. In order to get to D, you first need to go to B. And in order to get to C, well, you first need to go to B, to A, to C, or B, to D, to A, to C. Right, so there is a well-defined order with these characters, indicating that there shouldn't be any type of cycle, and that should be a hint as to what type of data structure we're going to use. Based on the looks of this and the fact that there aren't any cycles, we should consider each character to be a node and each edge between these nodes to represent the dependencies we've just calculated from this dictionary up here. So this becomes an ordering problem within a directed acyclic graph, a D, A, G. And this should lead you to using topological sort. So let's see how we can implement that. So we have our dictionary. Now we're going to be creating a graph from this. And in order to create a graph, we usually have an adjacency list that we need to populate based on the characters here and their dependencies. So for example, we know that B comes before A within the sequence. So B is going to be mapped to A as one of the dependencies. Now we can also see down here that B comes before D as well. So we can include D in here. So at the end of it, our adjacency list is going to look like this. So we loop over each word and each character within the words and map it to its individual dependencies. So B must come before A and D, A must come before C, and D must come before A. C, however, doesn't have any dependencies. Once we've created the adjacency list, then we can look at implementing topological sort, and we're going to be using depth of search for this. So what do we need in order to carry out topological sort? Well, we need a couple things. Firstly, we need to keep track of the state. So essentially what this means is for every node or for every character within this adjacency list, we need to monitor its state, whether we've seen it or not seen it, or we are currently seeing it. And this will allow us to determine whether there's a cycle in the list, because if there is a cycle, well, that doesn't fit our criteria for this question. So we need to return something like an empty string. We also need to populate a result array, and we can carry this out within the DFS recursive call. So let's walk through the process. Like we said, we're going to have three states. So all the characters initially are going to be unvisited. We also need to populate the result array. So let's add that down here. So let's start this process. So initially we have B. Let's first 
move B into visiting. Now in order to visit B fully and process it as visited, we need to first check its dependencies. And this is a DFS recursive call. So let's start off with A. We move A into visiting because B has the dependency of A. Now we're in A. A has the dependency C. So we're gonna make the recursive call into C. So that's been moved into visiting. Now, as you can see, C doesn't have any dependencies. So we can mark this as visited and add C into our result. So we go back up the call stack. So back to A, we check if A has any other dependencies. No, it doesn't. So we can also mark this as visited and include that within result array. Repeat the process. A doesn't have any other characters to look at. So we go back up the call stack. We go to B, check if this has any other dependencies. Well, we've seen A, we now move on to D because D is unvisited. So let's move D over to visiting. So we go into D within the adjacency list. We can see that A is a dependency of D. So we look at A. A state is visited. It's fully complete. So at this stage, we don't even need to look at this. So this will be one of the base cases within our DFS recursive call. If the state is visited, we know that it's been fully processed. So we can exit from this immediately. D has no other dependencies. So we can mark that as visited and add D within our result array. Finally, we go back up to B. We've checked all the dependencies and we can move B over to visited and add that within our result array. And this is exactly what we expect from topological sort. But as you can see, the results are slightly different from the solution in the problem statement, right? So we're expecting BDAC. So all we need to do now is just reverse the result. And this is going to give us a correct answer of BDAC. So time complexity for this, well, we have two main areas, right? We have the construction of the graph and we also have topological sort. So in order to construct the graph, well, we have say an average length of words, which is L. So we have O, L. We also have N number of words. So it's going to be O, L times N. And in regards to topological sort, in the worst case, we're going to have to visit each character and traverse each edge in the graph, which is going to be K plus E. And then in regards to space, it's also going to be O, K plus E. Now let's hop into the code editor and flesh this one up. Okay, so like we said in the walkthrough, the first thing we need to do is initialize the adjacency list. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to be a plain object. Let's loop through each word within our dictionary. And then for each character of the word, let's say if we don't have that character within our adjacency list, then let's add it in and assign a set to it. So at this point, we're going to have something that looks like this, right? So for each character within our dictionary, we've assigned a set to it, simple enough. Now we need to build the graph. And we'll build it based on our given dictionary. So we need to loop through the dictionary. We're going to go up to dictionary.length minus one. So by going up to dictionary.length minus one, we only include the comparison of these two words as the last comparison, right? We don't go as far as comparing CAD to undefined. Then we need to grab both words. So that word one is going to be equal to dictionary at i, and word two is going to be dictionary at i plus one. Simple enough, we've grabbed both the words. Now we need to ensure that we only compare the characters of the smallest word with the longest word. So we need to get the minimum length and that's going to be math.min. It's going to be word1.length and word2.length. Now we can compare the characters of adjacent words and look for differentials and then add their dependencies within our adjacency list. So let's go ahead and do that. So j is equal to zero. j is less than min length. So if word1 at j, so the character in word1 is different to the character in word2, well then let's update our adjacency list. And let's say adjacency at the character in word one, and we're simply going to add the character in word two to that. So this is now a dependency of this. And then we can break early from this. So once this is done, we'll have the adjacency list from earlier that looks like this. And now we need to perform typological sort on this adjacency list. So let's first declare our DFS function. We're passing in the character because that's what we're going to be looking at and we need a few things first before we do this. We said we're going to be looking at the state here. So we need to keep track of that. So let's create an object called state. We also need to populate a result array. And just to keep this code clean, let's create a constant called visit state. And let's create a couple states. So visiting, which is going to be one, visited, which is going to be two. In our solution, we don't actually need unvisited because if, sorry, this should be state. If this state object doesn't have the character within it, it just means it's unvisited. Okay, so now let's fill out this DFS function. Initially, we need to check for a cycle. And the way we do that is by checking the state of that character. If it's in visiting, then we have found a loop. We have found a cycle. So if state at the current character we're on contains the visiting state, so the value of one, then we can return true, right? To indicate that there is a cycle. 
We also need an early escape if we've already visited the character. So let's go ahead and add that in. So if this is equal to the state of visited, we can return false, indicating that there's no cycle and exiting early from this. Otherwise, we're going to update the state of the character that we're currently on to visiting. And then just like we did in the example, we're going to be carrying out that recursive call. So we're going to be checking every other dependency. So the neighbor of the current node we're currently on, let neighbor character of the current node we're on. And if DFS at that neighbor returns true, well, then we know that there is a cycle present here. So we return true from this to propagate that up to where we call the DFS function. If we don't hit that true, then we know that this is a valid option and we can update the state of the current character to equal visited. Mark it as visited, then we can push into result that character. And just to ensure that we return a Boolean from this, we can return false, indicating that we haven't found a cycle. Okay, so that's the DFS function sorted. All we need to do now is loop through the characters within the adjacency list. And if it's unvisited, so state at character is not present, and then we perform the DFS recursive call on that character, and this returns true, well, we have that cycle we were talking about. So we need to return an empty string here. So at the end of this loop, we should have something that looks like this for the first example. So the state for every single character is set to visited, so two, and then our result array is the correct answer backwards. So all that's left to do, you can create your own reverse function, but I'm just going to use the inbuilt reverse method for simplicity. And then like we said, within the problem statement, this needs to return a string. So let's join this array in order to form a string. Right, so let's recap over this very quickly. Initially, we created the adjacency list. We assigned a set to each of those characters. Then we built the graph using the dictionary, right? So we associated dependencies to every single node or every single character within this. Then we carried out topological sort with the use of DFS, finally reversing and joining the result in order to form the string. So let's submit this. And there you go, a very difficult question to solve. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one.